Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely breathtaking day here in Yosemite, just like it has been almost every day since I've gotten here. And I've been here for, I wanna say 10 or 11 days, but I really haven't taken very many photos, kind of just waiting for very specific conditions and moments that I wanna capture. And what I have been working on is this video that's kind of like, I don't know how to describe it. Maybe like the ASMR of video. My idea is gonna be like a 10 or 15 minute video of just beautiful shots of Yosemite with hopefully all the sounds that I also collected from here. Maybe you can hear some of the ones that are going on in the background now. And uh, yeah, so if you're into that, make sure you subscribe down below. It could be cool, I have no idea. We're gonna try it, maybe it works out. But the video today is actually about a piece of gear that's on my back right now. And I don't talk about gear that often, and when I do talk about gear, a lot of the times, I talk more about how it's just a tool to help me make better photos or not get in my way as much. And this piece of gear is, didn't really change anything about my photos. So going from the lens that I had before to this lens, the actual quality of the image didn't change at all. But I'm pretty sure it's the best piece of gear I've ever bought or upgraded from in photography. But I'm gonna talk about that more in a little bit. For now, I'm gonna go keep looking for shots, keep looking for compositions, even though I think I know what I'm shooting for sunset, which is half dome because there's been these clouds just like hovering behind half dome that are really unique looking all day. Just like this band of clouds or cloud, one cloud. I don't know how to describe it, but it's really cool. Hoping that stays there for sunset because that's really what I want to shoot. For now, I'm going to keep looking for more shots. Stay tuned. Lots more information on why, why I say that this is the best thing that I've ever bought in photography. Yeah. Enjoy. And uh, Yosemite. All right, so right behind where I was just talking to you in the opener for this video is this charred dead tree that is hollowed out on the inside from the fire or for maybe a controlled burn at some point. They do a lot of controlled burns here. There's one going on right now, actually. Uh, anyways, and it's really cool. There's a lot of textures on the inner part of the wood that you don't see on the outer part. So what I try to do is make a composition that use the outer parts of the bark on the left and right that are still there with that inner part of the char. Not entirely sure it's gonna come out because there's not really any light in there but it did catch my eye. Thought I'd go walk over and take a handheld shot with it and uh, just try it out. We're still two hours from sunset, so like I said, just looking around for cool compositions, textured things like this that aren't really, the light isn't super important, even though the light right now is harsh, but not terrible. We're not uh, midday at the moment. So, well, here you go. No matter what, here's the shot. Hope you enjoy. Like I was saying, gear for me is not necessarily just about image quality. A lot of the times, it's things like weight or size. And that's what really sold me on this lens. Now, I don't have my old lens to sit here and compare it to, but I do have a few pictures that I took when I got this lens that I'll put on the screen now that are just absolutely mind-blowing in terms of the difference in size between these two lenses. The image quality is basically the same. I'm never really gonna notice a difference, but the size and the weight just things like being able to fit this in my backpack differently. Like I'll try to put on the screen now where I can fit this in my backpack now compared to where I could fit it in my backpack before. And it is a night and day difference. It also means that I can walk around just hand holding so much easier. The weight is less. I wanna be out shooting with it more. And if you're new here and you didn't already know, my favorite lens is my 70-200. So being able to reduce the size, reduce the weight, and just carry it easier, take it on longer hikes and not think about it very much is a huge deal. It means I just get to take better photos because I have it with me rather than not making it to the spot because it's too heavy. And you might be asking, well, didn't I lose a stop of light from going the 2.8 to four? And I did, but the amount of times I've ever shot at f 2.8 are pretty small and getting things out of focus at f4 on a zoom lens like that and having some nice blurriness in it is not not that hard <laughs> on top of that the is in this thing is absurd 
like so absurd that I can film videos like this handheld. Handheld. And it looks smooth, zoomed in. Absolutely incredible. One of my favorite purchases so far in my photography journey. All right, so unfortunately, I've driven around the whole park and the only spot that I could see that cloud behind Taft Dome is from Tunnel View. I really wanted to avoid shooting from there. I've shot there plenty. Uh, it's gonna be people. Can't really talk to you guys that well. And I'm not entirely in love with the composition, but it's the only spot where that cloud is visible. So we're gonna get up there. I'll try to show you what it is. It's still there. It's been there all day. It's kind of impressive. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get up there and uh, see if we get anything. Last time you saw me, just as predicted, I was driving up to Tunnel View, and it was an absolute madhouse of people that I normally don't involve myself in, but the conditions were just too good to pass up. Absolutely gorgeous. The, there was a lenticular cloud behind the main scene in Yosemite, and out of all the days that I've been here, and the first time I came here four years ago, never seen any cloud formations like that, so really cool stuff. I'll put the image on the screen that I got or two images, I think I only got one. It's a, I wanna say four or five shot vertical pano, even though I didn't need to pano, but the spot that I was standing in, I didn't have time to go grab my other wide lens, so I just worked with my zoom lens, which coincidentally is what this entire video is about. So took it with my 7200, uh, just quickly panoed left to right, and uh, got this image. Pretty sweet. Anyways, this morning, we're about maybe 10 minutes from sunrise, but there's a lot of clouds, low-hanging clouds on the horizon, so I don't think the sun is gonna poke through yet, and I'm kind of just uh, waiting to see where it comes through. I'm at a spot that it normally comes through in the morning, and uh, it's not, not really showing up yet, so it's a wait-and-see kind of game. I also just woke up, so my uh, articulation of these words, probably not the best, but we're gonna, as I said, <laughs> wait and see. Uh, I'm on a roll this morning. Anyways, hope you're having a good evening, good morning, good day, Good night, whenever you're watching. So just as predicted, those low-hanging clouds blocked that morning light. Didn't really get a sunrise. There's some nice light going on. It's like really soft. Uh, some more soft light over here. No clue if you can see what I'm pointing at, but hopefully you can. Um, but normally when I want that soft light, I want some mood in my shots. I want some fog in the valley, um, rain, snow, things like that. So I didn't really get any you know, dynamic light. So what that means for me is I am gonna go back and get some sleep. Uh, not that you can see, but I'm still, you know, wearing flip-flops <laughs> and uh, sweatpants. And uh, getting back in bed, getting another hour or two of sleep sounds pretty nice, especially just because light just did not turn out how I wanted it to. So stay tuned and then we'll keep going.
been an entire day since you saw me last, and that is because, as you can tell, the conditions have not been great. They were definitely sunny yesterday for sunset. I snagged one cool photo right around four o'clock while I was working in my car, uh, editing this video, actually, <laughs> coincidentally. I took this photo and video of this rainbow that appeared on Bridal Veil Falls. Super cool stuff, lasted maybe five minutes, and uh, just dropped, jumped out of the car, grabbed it, and got it with the lens that this entire episode is about. And I thought, well, I can just keep not shooting. So I didn't shoot sunset last night and I didn't shoot sunrise this morning based on the conditions that I was given. Uh, and as you can tell, again, overcast right now, it's supposed to rain slash snow tomorrow, which I'm pretty excited for because that's, those are the conditions I love as long as there's some mood in the valley. So hopefully I get to film for that. But I thought I would take this time and just kind of like talk a little bit specifically about the lens. Now, I'm not someone that is gonna break down image quality, talk about all the bells and whistles that are on here. Uh, there are channels out there that will do that in stride for 20 to 30 minutes. The same videos that I watch uh, when I make a purchase is I just look at those things to get an idea of this versus that or is the upgrade worth it. Uh, most of the time, it doesn't really matter in terms of the image quality. Most lenses you get nowadays are just so good and the way we consume them all that really matters is the stuff you're capturing. It doesn't really matter uh, the lens that you're using because, like I said, if you spend the money, you're probably gonna get decent image quality. What does matter are some of the features, some of the things that I talked about before, which is just how small this is. I'm gonna show you in comparison. This is my 16 to 35 EF lens. So if you can imagine that when I use this on my Canon R5 that I'm filming on right now, it actually has an adapter. And that adapter makes it bigger than this lens. But uh, as of right now, they are roughly, let's see if I can get these on screen at the same height, roughly uh, exactly the same size, maybe just a little hair bigger on the 17, huh, 17, the uh, 70 to 200. Now, obviously it is not uh, internal zoom. It's an external zoom. That is something that I had to question in terms of weather sealing, dealing with the elements and stuff like that because my old 7200 uh, didn't move at all. And that was great because everything was contained in it. There's no, there's no water getting on this part and then going inside. But so far, it's been great. I haven't had any issues with that. Obviously, I've only put it through its paces in places like Iceland and here when I'm shooting in the rain, but haven't had any issues. The other thing that's really interesting that I always think about because you know, obviously this is weather sealed, is Canon has to, you know, expect that, right? They have to expect that if I'm shooting with this lens and it gets wet here, that it's not going to go internally into the lens uh, once I close it up. So it's not something I'm entirely worried about. They've gotten a lot better with it in the last 10 years. Uh, so I kind of just sacrificed that worry to get this size. And that's really what matters to me size. It's an entire pound lighter than my last camera and it is half the size. I want to say not exactly half but almost half the size which to me is just I mean it's just absolutely ridiculous uh, in terms of the change in my shooting. Just being able to put this in the same spot I could put my 16 to 35 uh, in my bag and being able to interchange that. So now when I have my 16 to 35 on and I want to drop it in my bag, great fits. But also if I just have my 7200 attached to my camera, it fits in the same spot. There is no, I need a larger spot for it. There's no, I got to put this lens on to fit it in my bag anymore. Uh, and all of those things matter uh, because if you've ever been on a hike or if you've ever been out shooting and you are deterred from being like, I don't want to take my camera out and then have to switch lenses to this for this moment that probably doesn't matter. And then maybe you miss something. Um, it's because of those little tiny things that, you know, get in your way. And an extra pound of weight is a pretty big deal when you're, let's say, trying to make a bag only 10 pounds rather than 11. That's, you know, a solid 10% difference in one item. That's a big deal. Image quality is pretty much the same. Um, I think some people, those videos that I was talking about that talk about going into detail about every minute thing and all the pixel peeping and stuff like that will tell you that this is probably a little bit sharper. But overall, I'm never gonna notice a huge difference. Um, and the other thing that you have to keep in mind that is the downside to this is that it is F4, like I've already mentioned, 
uh, going from 2.8, which was my old lens, to the f4. That is why the size and weight is such a big difference. Technically, if I got the 2.8 version of this, it would be a little bit bigger and a little bit heavier to match the 2.8 that I had before. So that also is varying in, in terms of like how, why I made that decision. But realistically, I went through all my catalogs and I looked and I said, what am I shooting at 2.8? Uh, and most of the time, the only time I'm shooting at 2.8 is to get that light. It's not to create something completely out of focus. Uh, sometimes it is, but even then, at 70 to 200, as I've already said, at f4 versus 2.8, you get a lot of uh, background blur, regardless of the aperture difference, just because of that focal length already built in. So I made the decision not to go for the 2.8. I'm not shooting anything that really requires it very often. As landscape photographers, we always want to try to shoot at uh, you know, lower apertures. But it's one thing that definitely crossed my mind and I had to make that decision, and I'm very glad that I did, because this, like this, I just cannot, I'm just, I'm so in love with the size of this. Um, it's one of those purchases where I was on the fence for like two weeks and after I made it, I was like, this is the best purchase I've ever made. Just how versatile it is, how great it is, and just the ease of use. The, it feels way better. I'm not carrying around this chonky lens anymore. And uh, yeah, I love it. So that's, that's the biggest takeaway from this. It's probably the last thing I'll say about the lens unless there's something that is at the end of the video or the rest of the video that I haven't filmed yet. Um, and I talk specifically about something the lens does. Um, but again, this isn't some in-depth comparison. This isn't some magical, like you need this specific lens. It's more about the concept of, or the conceptual idea that a lot of the times gear is about making it easier on you, not necessarily changing your image quality or lower light or anything like that. A lot of times I get way more excitement and enjoyment out of getting something that makes my life easier rather than changes uh, the quality of my images. And I think that just ties into just how great photography is now with all the equipment. From my videos on using your phone or just using old cameras uh, when I use my 6D to compare to this R5, bracketing images, we can get away with <laughs> the technology nowadays with pretty much anything you're shooting on. So what it really comes down to is does the stuff you have do what you need and does it make it easier? So I hope that that makes sense to you and uh, I'm running out of light, so I gotta shut up soon. So it's been a very special day here in Yosemite. As you can tell, it is raining right now. It has rained most of the day. However, there have been moments where that rain stops and the sun shines through and it peers through the clouds and it is absolutely spectacular. It's some of the footage you probably just saw. And also I'm gonna end this episode with some of the images I took in between that footage. I didn't really talk about anything. I didn't film myself because I was really focused on those ever-changing conditions. And it just, stuff happens in split seconds. Clouds are moving so fast that lo the low-hanging clouds in the valley an image can change within 10 seconds. So that's really what I was focused on doing. I didn't really have a lot more to say about the gear. I hope that this video was insightful to open your mind that sometimes gear isn't about an upgrade or the next best thing or increasing your image quality or megapixels or something like that. 
for me, a lot of the times it's just about getting out of my way and helping me connect with photography more and getting me out there and restricting me less. So if you enjoyed it, consider liking the video. And if you're interested in that Yosemite video that I'm working on with all this absolutely gorgeous footage, make sure you subscribe down below and I'll see you again next week. Later. Thank you.